Conoclash project is an attempt to raise questions provocated by Charlie Hebdo, the massacre, and by continuous terrorist threats to what we consider the memories of culture of mankind. And in a way that is a question for us to ask how does it affect us? How do we defend ourselves? How do we prepare ourselves? Also with the knowledge that previous decades have shown a lack of success in building a dialogue. I think this is uh, a fundamental question with so much uh, of the violence we're seeing around the world deliberately destroying cultural images. And the question is, well, what is, what is this about? I mean, apart from the obvious shock value, uh, what is driving this? Why does ISIS target cultural sites and destroy cultural heritage? It gives me the opportunity to explain why ideology matters and how the same principles of that ideology is being used to justify the destroying of stones, buildings, mosques, graveyards, the burial sites of holy men, and likewise the removal or the shedding of blood of those who are being defined and perceived as non-Sunni Muslims. In ISIS mindset, this statue, which is a manifestation of shirk, thus a violation of tawhid or the oneness of God, has not been destroyed by the early Muslims because it was just discovered in the 19th or 20th century. So that's the reasoning they're giving, and that's the legality they take among a great deal of theological reasoning that they position very tactically. These actions are to be rejected because they are like in kind to the violence against human beings, both being attempts to erase personhood of people, of things, of places, and to deny memory and meaning. Cultural heritage response in times of crisis, uh, the worst time to formulate a response is in the midst of crisis. Uh, because the re whether it's a natural crisis or if it's a period of conflict, uh, and that the easiest um, time to respond is either before in a preventive sense or afterwards in a, in a reconstruction or a reconciliation sense. To what extent can the memory that is embedded in um, uh, these artifacts, in these monuments, in these places, can, to what extent can that memory survive once the monuments themselves have disappeared. The positive thing is that the memory of a destroyed place can continue to link people who are denied its reality. And we see that over and over. The Cultural Revolution in China, we could also talk about the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. None of these things completely destroy the understanding that there was a history and the desire to recreate history. Does it not make any difference whether the um, image, the statue, sculpture, whatever you want to call it, represents a religious figure? Are all statues and sculptures forbidden? Uh, I mean, you have historical statues which are defined as pre-Islamic and thus coming from an era of ignorance or not knowing that there's the oneness of God principle. And all of that is, is defined as associating false god to that one god. This touches all of us, uh, the destruction of, of millennia old uh, artifacts, but let's not forget, uh, even if that is terrible, the loss of human life and the loss of human civilization is, is probably even worse. Uh, so, and, and the one obviously is part of the other. Uh, we have to make every effort to, to stop that bloodshed and, and get back to a civilized way of uh, f dealing with our differences. Mm -hmm.